G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is the M60. That's right, fire up Creedence Clearwater Revival. It's time to look at the M60 again. But this is not like any M60 you've seen before. No, 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 this one actually has belt-fed animations, which are totally awesome. We'll get to those in a second, but for now, we'll just look at what this thing has to offer in terms of attachments. First of all, we've got the receivers. Just for the advanced receiver, the same thing you'd get out of a 44 Magnum, which is nice. And for the barrels, you've got a standard one here, a shorter one if you want to have this thing be a little bit better in VATS, but that cuts your accuracy and range down, so I wouldn't recommend it. But you can have a bipod barrel with the bar uh, with the bipod actually up or down, which is neat. I'm going to have it down because I kind of like the barrel just sort of wiggling around as you're running around with this thing, even though there's got no physics attached to that bipod, unfortunately. Now for the stocks, there's actually a little bit you can do here. So you can have a wooden foregrip there, so some of these will actually contain a foregrip, which is really good. It doesn't actually work in third person to my knowledge, but we'll see if it does, if we ever, if we find a good third person, uh, a good foregrip barrel. So there we go. For a full stock there, you actually get a full stock there instead of that little stub on the shoulder thing. So I'd imagine that help you control recoil a little bit better. As you can tell there, that marksman stock is looking pretty good. It's actually got that stock shape that you'd expect out of an M60. Recoil compensating stock has a little bit more going on with the foregrip there. So that'll probably give us the best recoil control. Hopefully the uh, animations line up. If they don't, I'm just going to chuck on the one with um, just the straight grip there. Next up, we can change the ammo capacity. We can double up to 100 rounds there, which is great. We'll definitely do that. And for the sights, we've got a choice between iron sights and gunner sights. Gunner sights just are pretty much like AA sights, if you're familiar with um, the LMGs in Battlefield 1, it's sort of like that. Um, a little bit more sort of rings in it than you would with the um, minigun gunner sight, so it's sort of related to that. Now for the muzzles, whereas, whereas I'd usually put a suppressor on this thing, obviously that's not really connected to the barrel that actually gets in the way of your aim, so we're going to leave this with the flash suppressor on, although you can put a muzzle brake on it to control a little bit of recoil, but at this point I'm pretty sure the recoil is going to be minimal because I've actually tested this thing a little bit before. We've got this creation club um, attachment point left over, not deleted by the modder, and last but not least, some legendary effects are there if you need them. But at 184 damage with a decent fire rate and lots of rounds in the mag, or the belt I should say, I feel like this thing is going to be fine. We're not going to be cheesing with suppressors so we'll just skip straight on to Gunner's Plaza. Okay, as it turns out, looks like you do ignore that foregrip in third person, so we'll just switch that out real quickly. Righto, so here we are in Gunner's Plaza with our pig. There we go, there's a custom draw animation where you pull the bolt back. And yeah, looking down the sights there, not too constricting there, which is pretty good. Switching over to the regular iron sights, it's a little bit more, but the sights are usable nonetheless. If we go ahead and switch to our other one and go into third person, as you can tell, this thing is scaled right. It's a very big LMG in real life, and so too is it in this one. So yeah, good stuff. Okay, we'll get started on killing some of these gunners, and then when we get a nice chance to reload, we'll go ahead and do that. So whilst they're all standing there, we'll just get a couple of sneak attack criticals before we hit these guys for less than 100 damage, but that's fine because we've got an automatic weapon. And to pair that off with um, basically no recoil, which is kind of strange for an M60 mind, um, yeah, we can take out gunners very, very quickly indeed. Alright, we'll see how far we can go with the remaining 24 bullets in our belt, so if that one wants to stay there, that's good stuff, okay. We got a couple of cheeky headshots on her, which definitely helped. We'll run up nice and close to old mate here. You know what, we'll show off the bash animation, which comes in the form of just punching them. Which is, um, yeah, I think that's something Captain Bridget would do. As you can tell, it probably doesn't do a lot of damage, and you still have that, um, sound of the, um gun bashing there, but I'll just stress this right now, this thing is actually in beta, so a couple of the things aren't quite finished yet, and just to see that reload animation again whilst the heat is off us for the second. Awesome stuff, War Daddy. Really good. Okay, but does it happen in uh, third person? Nope, that's just the standard assault rifle reload, but again, it's a beta. Now, I'm not really keen on the sounds of this thing, although, um, they might not be finished yet. Um, I'm sort of, you know, I've got a standard of M60 sounding, you know, M60 sounds from the Battlefield games, and yeah, this thing really doesn't come close, but yeah, not too happy with the sounding of this thing, but you know what, that's something that can change at a later date, which is good. We'll just mow down everything in our way. 
back off for the reload or just switch to the other M60. I feel like switching is a nice way to cancel that long ass reload there. Although we will need to remember to reload that one when we draw it back out a little bit later. Man, we are just cleaning house with this thing. Oh, looks like we've got the, um, uh, the scrounger thing to proc there. But as you can tell there, if you were watching the belt as I fired out all of the rounds, there was still a little bit left in there, which is, I guess, a limitation of the animation, but it would take a buttload of scripting and Fallout 4 script extended to actually get um, no things or no um, bullets left in your belt to appear when you actually empty this thing, because, yeah, Fallout 4 is a little bit um, sort of simple when it comes to that. I guess the engine is a little bit simple. But I do really like the detail under the, um, the, I'm not even sure what that top bit of the LMG is called that you close down in it. The, the door? Uh, I don't think it's a door. My gun terminology isn't all that strong. Would you believe I'm not American? I don't know guns, um, through and through like the average American would. But the good thing about that is that I don't have kids shooting me in school. Okay, we'll just get off that politicalness now and go on to some... 60s commentary because the M60 it was a thing that was used during the Vietnam War and um, Yeah, good job on that America. You got beaten and but uh, yeah, just keep telling yourselves that you won <laughs> I'm just kidding um, But yeah, you did lose so uh, shame on you for that. We'll move on to something else Okay, you rejoined me on a very edgy episode of Captain Noob here and uh, yeah um, Seeing as half of my audience comes from the US I really shouldn't go ahead and run my mouth on things like that But I'm pretty sure there's going to be a bunch of dislikes from all of that You can't really say anything bad about Americans. I don't like it They've got, um, certain patriotic sensibilities about them, you know? But you know what, that's fine. Also, come back here. Put that away, Bridget. Bring it out again. Cancel that reload. Now, I've got this thing fitted with the, um, violent legendary effect there, which gives a little bit more recoil. And I, I feel like with the violent effects extra recoil onto it, I feel like this thing is actually a little bit more realistic when it comes to that sort of thing. Okay, so what have we got over here? Have we got any bears? We've got a frag mine. That's not a bear. Might as well leave this little section alone then, and we'll move straight on to the Super Mutants. Now, we have got a secret weapon to beat Jared at the end here, because since we aren't using a suppressor, we can't just cheese um, stealth damage to kill him. So, yeah, I'm just going to get out my Furious M60 whenever he shows up, and then we'll deal with him with that. I may not have been ready for all of this recoil. Hey look, it's a Super Mutant Suicider. What level are you, by the way? Oh, level 16. Would you do zero damage to me if I ran up to you? Basically. Okay, so now all the Super Mutants are screaming at me, but I can go up to them at point blank range and just mow them down with some nice throw away rounds. No need to do this in third person. We're just gonna spray them like Rambo, because Rambo definitely um, uses third person when he goes on and um, shoots everything. I think that was one of the only Rambo things that I saw as, as a kid. Um, I walked into the lounge room and the TV was on, it was a Rambo movie. He just had an M60 in one hand, the belt in the other, and he was just shooting up a room full of, uh, I think they were computers? Anyway, I think it was Sylvester Stallone, he had big long hair, I was like, damn, that gun's awesome. And yeah, that was my first experience of the M60, and I've really loved it ever since. Um, I remember in Battlefield 3, it was my used, my most used LMG, but then, um, yeah, I liked it in Battlefield 4, but I didn't get as much use out of it, simply because that was my time as I transitioned into a tanker, rather than um, an infantry player. I like to play a lot of... TDM back in Battlefield 3 because uh, No Shire Canals or whatever, that was a great map for it and um, yeah, I, I really wasn't pleased with the TDM maps back in Battlefield 4, I just found them to be too, I don't know, I just didn't like them. I felt like I was always getting flanked all the time, whereas at No Shire Canals or some of the other maps, um, you could more predictably get the spawns on, but maybe that's just experience and um, you know, also what was in there, 2 shot 44 Magnum. That's actually not a terrible weapon. Okay, so we've cleaned up these mutants pretty easily, so in terms of balance, I feel like this thing is a-okay. Maybe a little bit more on the powerful side than what you'd expect, but 
I've got all of the damage perks, so yeah, you really need to sort of spec into this thing to actually make it worth your while, which is, I guess you could say about most guns, but there's some guns like the explosive combat shotgun where you could probably get away with not having all of the required perks to have a good time with that. Anyways, we'll get out our furious one here and we'll light up Gerald over here. In fact, he's actually taken damage from something. He might have actually gone and picked a fight with um, the gunners over there in the South Boston military checkpoint before. Um, yeah, he encountered me, so we get a little bit of a head start, which is nice, but without those sneak attack criticals, um, we're going to be building furious damage very slowly, and without all of the shots and bats that we usually get out of more of that, uh, that's efficient rifles or weapons, yeah, it's going to be a little bit hard to keep on shooting him, but we've got a whole lot of damage stacked up at this point. But not enough damage as it turns out. Okay, this time we're gonna go ahead and skip straight to Gerald and try to avenge our untimely death before. So, what we wanna do is get a little bit of distance on him, but put us not between him and the gunners there because they'll, um, I'm pretty sure they can actually um, interfere with my furious damage stacking, and we actually. We definitely want our furious stacking to do as much as possible, so I feel like this is a good place to start if we can get a view on Gerald over there. No, he's just, just stuck behind a tree there, but now we can. Let's go ahead and get some criticals on him. I'm just going to crit spam him until we can get, um, you know, until we're running out of crits, which um, we won't because we've already got five before we even started this, which is good. Looks like we can actually get the furious damage stacking with the sneak attack crit damage, which is actually very, very powerful indeed. See, 1300 damage there, or 1400 I saw for some of the shots there. Now that we aren't getting the sneak attack crit damage, yeah, we're not doing as good there, and I'm pretty sure I missed a few shots. Okay, here comes Gerald with his mighty hammer again. You know what, I'm just going to crit. He's going to slam down his thing, and before he can attack again, we'll quickly run over here. Still got 36 rounds in the um, in the belt, so we should be good to take him out, provided we can get the adequate amount of distance on him to turn around and start shooting at him again. Looks like he's gone to take on some gunners instead, which is good, so yeah, they're a nice distraction, I suppose. And even some raiders have shown up. It's like a battle royale of many different um, factions here. That's something that people liked about Fallout 3, how the wasteland felt alive with all of the different random encounters that could happen at once. Okay, so now we're out of ammo, so we panic and run around, and make sure you do sprint and go into third person when you reload a weapon like this, but then I remembered that um, you reloaded like an assault rifle in third person, so whoops. Oh well. And with one more crit and some hip fire on him, we should, yep, say goodnight to him there. So, there goes Gerald there, we'll quickly finish off whatever's left out there that's still aggroed, and then we'll call it a video. So, that there was the M60 still in beta. Um, all I know about this weapon is that War Daddy has done the animations, I'm not sure who's done the model on this, but whoever they were, they did a fantastic job, which is good stuff. Maybe it's the same or a similar model to a uh, standalone M60 I've seen in the past, but these textures look honestly too good. I, I don't remember rating those textures too high. It also helps with these animations. The model looks definitely better. But um, since it is in beta, this thing is only on PC. You can download it on War Daddy's Discord. I'll include a link in the description as always, and I really shouldn't have reloaded then. See, I'm going to need to um, rethink how I reload weapons now with a LMG like this. This is why we needed some sort of LMG weapon with, you know, a huge mag size or um, belt size, but slow reload, so you can, you, so yeah, really have to think about it tactically when you reload, rather than just, you know, going through half of your bullets and then reloading then. Um, that's something that's weird about the Fallout 4 Assault Rifle, how the reload on it is so fast, yet you have such a high ammo capacity that, you know, that, uh, it's really not worth it. Also, I'm on the verge of coughing, so I'm going to stop the video there before I cough my guts up all over the mic. So, yep, links will be in the description. <coughs> Damn it, so close. <coughs> I've already said what you needed. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope I don't die. Oh dear, and while I 
probably could leave that out and do a clean of take of that outro. I'm just going to leave it in there for your amusement. Yay.